Yes, the subs are out for Index, Season 3, Episode 8. I was a bit panicky at first on Friday, like, yo man, where's Index at? Where's Index? I couldn't find Index until re late yesterday, last night, it came on. I'm like, nope, I ain't doing nothing but reviewing it today on Sunday. So here we go. This episode of Index was really easy was time to shine. And it did it in a very interesting way. In most anime where you have a minor character when they have their time to shine, most times they win their battles. However, that isn't always the case. Issa in a way, just like me of the the church that she's in, didn't always live a very good life. So they question themselves, do they have the right to live happily? Especially having being around someone else so friendly such as Toma you have a sense of guilt, like, it's okay for me to feel this. Not many people can um, relate to that kind of feeling, but there are those who out there that can. Those who know misery all their life, but to see someone who brings them a little bit of happiness and hope makes you feel uncomfortable, because this is something you're not used to. So I guess that's understand, as we humans are creatures of habit, when we do something that we're not used to, of course we'll feel uncomfortable about it. Seeing how she felt like she failed Toma in protecting him, thanks to Aqua being just a beast, she and she got pushed over the edge by the Pope, of course. The Pope was just like, hey, instead of feeling sorry for yourself, instead of thinking that you should be dead instead, try to use the life that Toma saved to avenge him at least, you know? Don't let this dude get away what he did. Continue to protect Toma. You're alive, so you still have a chance to protect Toma. That's what the Pope was. And he gave a pretty good speech on if you think you're best girl, then do what you can become best girl. Because in the world of Index, everyone's fighting to become best girl. That's the real war that's happening right now. We already know who's best boy is, but who best girl is, we don't really know. <laughs> All jokes aside, we also get to know some about Aqua himself, his real name being William. He was a saint at first, just a saint. He had accomplished many achievements in his life, including some very dangerous wars that many people consider at that time hell on earth. The fact that he was able to survive these events and still come up on top was extremely powerful. No wonder why he was in position of um, the rear, in a way. And it's plus using his power of aqua. Finally we're gonna see him actually using, you know, actual water magic. But these are actually the powers from Gabriel, one of the archangels. You know, Gabriel, blow your horn. It's water, but more more to say, it's actually tears that's actually being poured out, which is a very interesting thing. You know, tears. So all that stuff's in there is tears, and tears are probably one of the saltiest substances of liquid that actually come out of your body. Besides sweat, in a way tears in a way are like sweat, but they're emotional sweat. They only come out of you in this onions or any other form of chemical entering your eye, or you're very, very sad. So that's how tears are both produced, but you know that already. I'm just giving you a little science explanation within this power of magic. So to produce all those tears, Gabriel must be one weeping angel. Get Doctor Who reference, yeah, whatever. Now, not much really happened in this episode, so I'm going to try to make it short and just sum things up. Each was now more than determined to use all the powers and all she can to take down Aqua, along with everybody else in her gang, but however, it was just not enough. Because if, a, if he was a normal saint, Aqua, her plan was succeeded. Meaning she wasn't weak, it's just that he was just too powerful. There's a difference between when you fight someone you lose because you're weak, or you fight someone you lose because the person you face are just way out of your league. It doesn't mean you're weak, it just means something else. And that's a video for another day when it comes to power scaling and knowledge and all that stuff that means to win a battle in anime and manga. But nonetheless, Aqua had other tips and tricks up his sleeve to the point where he came out the victor at the end. However, Right before he was about to face off Izua one more time, the beautiful sword saint of the east 
comes into play. We haven't seen this woman fight in a very, very long time. And I believe that's the time I actually seen her in action, I'm trying to think, was since, what, season one. That's when we actually see her fight. She doesn't like getting into battles and she doesn't believe in violence that much. But however, when she, she sees someone who is strong belittling someone else instead of admiring their strength despite how weak they are, it's kind of insulting to her, especially someone that's close to her. I guess her counter, of course, with Toma, which, believe it or not, she actually beat Toma. Toma didn't really beat her, now you think about it. She, she is probably one of the only people besides Aqua that Toma hadn't defeated yet. When you really think about it, I'm trying to remember, but during this season of NX1, during the you know, first volumes, when he was facing her, um, he she beat him physically but he won over her mentally and spiritually in a way so it had her gave her a change of thought she no longer wished to be into conflict ever since then so she's been trying to live her life of peace to lead an example for her people despite that fact the people still follow her from a distance wishing only the best for her which is very noble but now seeing her friends in danger she wishes to come and rise to the occasion and at the very end, we see Toma being Toma, not trying to take a rest. Problem with Toma is problem with many, many anime main characters. They like to shoulder their burden on themselves way too much. Toma, yes, you are pretty much nearly unbeatable with your right arm in this world, but however, even you have your limits. But he does not refuse to see that. He doesn't want to see one upset. He has his never-ending guilt of seeing people upset around him for a point where he wishes to do something. I have seen people like this sometimes in my life, where they they have to be the center of attention that because they're insecure, but more likely they can't stand people being sad around them. They get kind of awkward when things are gloomy and dull. So they have to do something to bring themselves up, even if it means making an embarrassment of themselves, which is something that Toma is really well known for. And see in the previous next episode, he's going to try to do something, but I don't think he's going to succeed. And it's a battle between the East um, Sword Princess versus Aqua of the Rear. Now commence. So yes, that is Index Episode 8. Um, you know, it was okay. It was a great episode for Itsuwa, but other than that, it wasn't something that really sparked my interest. Um, it was nice to know a little bit more about Aqua and his real name and why he's so freaking strong. But other than that, you know, it was just really those two characters that are really driving this episode forward to its climax. To bring in the, you know, there were, each one away with like an opening act, but that itself is okay. It's okay to be an opening act. So good job for each one. Now it's time for the main character to come in and start kicking some ass. And that's what I'm looking forward to next week. Hopefully, I won't have problems finding this episode on Friday like I did this week, and it'll show up on time. Who knows? Time can tell. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, rate, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload. Macron Anime, signing out. Have a good one.